I, I feel like using a microphone this morning might not even be required, especially if everybody came toward the front in these uh, maybe front two sections and just used the first 10 or 12 pews and we would feel so much more together, wouldn't we? What do you think? Anybody, anybody willing to kind of move in the center section and cheat to the front a little bit? There you go. It just got you on the move, didn't we? Hey, I, I particularly had a lot of, oh, now I see a baby back there, and I understand why a baby would stay in the, toward the back, and, and you guys do as you need to do, okay? No demands here. I'm just so glad to see you. Thanks for coming out. Um, you know what was a blessing to me this morning? I got up, had that cup of coffee, saw that snow coming down, and we were talking about with the trustees and with the uh, de chairman of deacons, are we going to have service? And, and, and in the middle of all that, Trey Chapman spent the night at our house last night. And y'all love Trey? I mean, Trey is a top-notch young man. Well, anyway, what was so joyful to me is we all decided we were going to church together. So when everybody gets to ride together in the car, but buddy, when I turned around, I'm driving Karen's little Subaru, and I turn around and I look, and I see Trey in the back seat with his knees up to his chin and his head's on the roof. That was so cool. <laughs> I'm like, that boy has really grown up. Fine young man, young man in the Lord. Well, folks, um, thanks for coming out this morning. Good morning, Joe. Good to see you, friend. Um, our church bulletin, um, you, of course, will notice that like you usually do, but we have got some special things coming up. Next Sunday morning right here, uh, Bob Gillespie, he, we support him on a monthly basis, and he is a Christian apologist, and he speaks Bible and science creation uh, from, you know, from using science. But he's going to speak... Um, to our students, um, I think third to 12th grade, he's going to take that whole batch and really do a talk for them in the realm of Bible and science. And then for us, right here at 1030, he'll be preaching on abundant living in light of what we know in Genesis, abundant living. You won't want to miss that. He's a good speaker, and he'll be right here in this pulpit next Sunday morning. And then, by the way, after uh, next Sunday, after service, 3 p.m. in the evening, um, we've got another cookie drop we'd like to do. What is a cookie drop? It's where new families that are coming into our church through Awana, visitors that are here on Sunday mornings, or some of our shut-ins, we take a dozen homemade cookies, we drop it by their house, and um, we have a short interaction with them. So to help me be ready for cookie drop, I need two things. A dozen people to cook two dozen cookies. And you'll notice right here in the bulletin, ask you what to do. But we don't want too many cookies. So there is a sign up on the information table. So once we have 12 people cooking two dozen cookies, we don't need any more. That's, that's plenty. We've got 24 visits lined up where we'll go drop these cookies off. So um, the cookie drop. And if you want to be a part of running those cookies to homes, 3 o'clock right here in the Fisher Hall next Sunday, and we'll, we'll use you that way. Well, again, thanks for coming out. We're going to have a great service together. Um, I would like to begin by invoking the Lord's presence through prayer. You'll notice the scripture I read is considered, you, you, you do it at the beginning of a service or at the end of a service, and it's called the Aaronic Blessing. Listen to this verse and then we'll bow for prayer. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful for the safety this morning that you've granted us. We're grateful for the cold weather and the snow that we so rarely get to enjoy. We are more thankful though for the warmth of your presence, your spirit, Jesus Christ adopting us into your family. 
Father, your blessing, your approval upon our lives, we seek today to renew that. Your face shining upon us, your attention in caring for the details in our life. Father, your grace, you're gracious unto us and that abundance of provision we acknowledge. And your countenance radiates and when we see that smile from you, that approval, that affirmation from you, peace floods our heart. So this morning with whatever conflicts we've come, we acknowledge we want your blessing. And we will find that today as we worship together. Lift our songs in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning. <laughs> Um, so glad that you all are here. We were wondering who would be here, and we're so thankful for each of you coming out this morning. Um, Psalm 84 <clears throat> talks about uh, the dwelling place of the Lord. And the psalmist says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. For my heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. So we get the opportunity this morning, if you'll stand with us, um, to sing to our living God this morning. And your presence here tells me that you long to be here. <laughs> so we can, uh, we can kind of uh, be in agreement with the psalmist here with uh, what a blessing it is to be in the courts of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, 
King of kings, 
think you can be seated. Good morning in this snowy morning. It's great to see everyone. Uh, as we were singing, I was thinking about um, how God told us to pray. And before we pray, what she said, our Father in heart to heaven, then what was next? Hallowed be thy name. And I think the songs that we were singing this morning just helps remind us who we're really praying to. Sometimes I forget that, that we're praying to the God of the universe, the all-powerful God of the universe. And so as we pray this morning, I hope each of us will recognize that as I try, I'm trying to do a little better this year. <laughs> so we have a couple of prayer requests. I know we have several people in our congregation that have been sick or have illnesses. And so just ask that you be, keep Barbara King in prayer tomorrow that she's going to be having heart surgery. Uh, and Dan Forwood, who's going to be seeing an oncologist this week to see about some additional perhaps treatments. So please keep them in prayer. I know a lot of people too are just sick and have uh, colds and different things that are going around. So please keep them in your prayer as well. So if you'll join me in prayer. Lord, we are thankful that we can be in your house this morning and we thank you for all your blessings in each of our lives. We are so thankful and we do recognize that you are the King of Kings and the God of the universe, the most powerful of all. And we just thank you, Lord, that you love us. Even though you are the King of the universe, that you would recognize us and love us. So we thank you for that this morning. We just ask that you would be with our service this morning, be with the pastors, bring some message, open our hearts to be able to hear it and receive it. And Lord, we just thank you for the fact that we can be here. We thank you for your word and we thank you for our salvation, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to be with these prayer requests, that you would be with Barbara as she has this surgery tomorrow, that you'd watch over the, the doctors and be with her and keep her safe and healthy and help her to recover well from this. We just ask that you would be with Brother Dan as he sees the oncologist, Lord, that whatever he might need to make him healthy, that you'll guide their steps and guide their, their guidance to him. We just ask that you would help each of the needs of those in our church and our church family that we don't know what those needs might be and what struggles and challenges that each of us may be going through that you just help each of us to look to you for your answer to those challenges. And Lord, just be with our service this morning. Be with our country, be with our leaders, be with our military, Lord, in the, in the challenging times that we're facing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, Psalm 84, verse 10. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in tents of wickedness. When we as believers ask Christ into our lives, the Spirit comes and dwells within us. And He makes His home in us. So no matter where you might find yourself in life, you truly are home if the Spirit lives within you. The song, Psalm 84, I'm home.
And that was a powerful message in that song. Guys, thank you. You know, um, so much goes on behind the scenes. And on a morning like this morning, our Sounds of Grace and, and Debbie, everybody came out. And I'm just so grateful. Man, our ushers, they, they uh, cleared the sidewalks. And um, our trustees involved very much to make sure it's reasonably safe for us. And, you know, uh, folks, I, I, it may seem a little silly, but... Um, you know why I'm going to wear a microphone like this? Because this goes directly to our recording um, a little stronger than this one. So, um, you know, there'll probably be this many more people watching the service later today. So, I'm glad you're here. And thank you for the effort coming out. Have you been encouraged already with the song? I have. Let's grow. Let's grow in Christ. What do you think about that phrase? Is that found in the Bible? We'll make a case for this in just a few moments. But last year, our theme was through love, serve one another. And we would banter back and forth a little bit. I would say, serve one another. And you would say, and then through love. All right, we kind of internalized that. And remember, we had a good start to that theme last year. We had a tree over here and we hung little hearts and we put acts of service. So that was our theme throughout the year last year. And this church acted on it. We continued to hear about through love, we're going to serve one another. And that was taken out of Galatians 6. This morning, I'd like to introduce a theme that we'll come back to on and off throughout the year. Let's grow 
in Christ. And I'd like you to know a little bit of the conversation that went on with the pastors and deacons as we talked about this theme. Um, first of all, there is an admonition in Scripture, and it should be up on the screen. 2 Peter 3, 18. And it tells us this very thing. Let's, uh, let's read this verse out loud together, if you will, with me. Let's start together. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, obviously, that ends a chapter. That ends an entire book in the Bible. Amen. But we're going to take that phrase, grow, let's grow in Christ. It's taken from this text right here. And this morning, particularly, we'll focus on it. Um, so we have the admonition of Scripture this morning that says, that's a good theme for the year. Let's grow in Christ. We also have biblical goals in the Bible to be disciples of Christ. Remember the commission? All authority, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go and make disciples of all nations. When we place the words belong, grow, serve on the lobby of the church, it was with that commission to make disciples. I hope every time you see those words, belong, grow, serve, you will understand it to be a rally call to do the Great Commission. Make disciples. We belong to a spiritual family. We grow closer to God by growing closer to his people. And then we serve. You know, we use the spiritual gifts, abilities God gives us, and we offer ourselves for service to him. That is part of making and being a disciple. So with that in mind, I've asked Wes to come, and he's going to touch on something. Um, you know, belong, grow, serve. It's the commission. I want Wes just to talk a little bit about growing closer to God by growing closer to people, and he'll give us a quick, quick thought here. Good morning. <clears throat> well, uh, you guys may not know, but I am the, uh, the, the teacher for the class Clay Cafe. Um, yeah, we represent. Uh, we have been going strong for, I want to say, three, almost four years now. Um, and it's been a real blessing. Uh, it's been very fun. Uh, I think there's been uh, some definitely some good growth amongst the, 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 those that attend. Um, for those that have been here for a while, uh, the Clay Cafe is actually a uh, regeneration of the class aftershock. Um, and the, the idea of this class, whenever it was put into place, was uh, to transition um, kids from the, the youth room to college age study. Um, thus, why we originally named it aftershock. Um, but now we're trying to take a more um, kind of welcoming, warm cafe type environment. We're, we're still working on the cafe part, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're getting there, but it's, it's been a real blessing to me. I hope it's been a, been a blessing to those that have attended. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, um, we, it is geared towards college-age students uh, and singles. Um, however, over time, uh, we have definitely uh, welcomed in ages of all kinds. Um, I even had Tom Waggle in there a few weeks, a few months ago. So it goes all the way to the top. <laughs> um, but no, um, if you're looking for a class, uh, I welcome any age, um, whether I have someone that's 70 or if I have someone that's 17, um, it's not going to change how I teach. We're still going to preach truth, we're still going to preach the word, um, and we're going to make sure that uh, everyone learns. Um, so right now we're actually going through the book of Hosea. Um, as you know, that is a minor prophet, and within that book, chapter 4, it talks about how um, God speaking to Israel said that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Um, that's something that I have tried to pound into the brains of the people in my class. Is the, the knowledge of God is what, what gives us our blessing. It's what uh, you know, brings about a new person within us. Is understanding the scriptures and the truth he has for us. 
Um, so I encourage daily readings, weekly readings, um, a, a, a constant study of the word. And uh, we get that through what we're studying through in the book Hosea. We're going through a series of minor prophets. Um, we've done four books of minor prophets. We're getting ready to wrap it up, hopefully pretty soon, with Micah. And then we're going to move on to uh, some new things. Um, just to touch upon what we do, uh, it is an expositional approach to scripture. Um, we take it line by line to try to understand exactly what the text is meaning and pull from that. Um, we don't try to add to the text. We pull to, from the text what, we, what it says. Um, along with that, we've also touched on other things. Um, instead of just pulling from scripture, we've also done classes on um, church history. We've done classes on um, different denominations within the Christian, Christian faith. Um, we've done small classes about different religions. And we even had classes um, where we take a apologetic approach to uh, contemporary complaints um, towards the Christian faith or uh, different um, explanations of scripture. Um, so we try to take a deep theological dive into, into the word. Um, so along with that, we also try to do fun things. It has been a long time uh, with sicknesses and house remodels, but we do try to do small groups as well. Um, I feel that uh, some of the best growth we can have um, comes from those small groups. It becomes very intimate and uh, a very relaxed feeling. So with that being said, uh, again, uh, Clay Cafe, we're located in the gym above the men's bathroom. Uh, if you don't have a class, uh, feel free to join us, and we'll be happy to have you. So. Awesome. All right, that is a great update, Wesley. So one way you can belong at Elkview Baptist a little bit more and grow, Clay Cafe. Great class to attend on Sunday morning, 930. They meet on this end of the gym, upstairs. You see there's a stairway on this end of the gym. They're in one of those classes up there. You can't miss them. Go check them out. All right, our Bible's open to 2 Peter 3.18. And we're talking about let's grow in Christ. And we're just, we're correlating our, our three uh, buzzwords out there in the lobby, belong, grow, and serve. But this year's theme, let's grow in Christ. We're going to look at the grammar real quick of this verse. So the verse here, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just that, that, that verse, 2 Peter 3, 18, let's look at the grammar. So um, I had to call Mary Kay White to make sure I was square on this, and, um, and she clarified and, and made sure we were right. So the subject of the sentence is understood to be you and me. It's you, the word you. You grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The subject is you. The verb is what, church? Grow. Okay, it's grow. And that is a present tense active voice. Now we're really getting into something here sticky. The active tense of the voice means the subject is the doer of the action. In other words, we are, and, and, and it's an imperative. It's also a, a present tense, active voice, in an imperative mood. And that means it's being barked out. It's a command. You grow in Christ. You're responsible. Wow. Now, you and I know as we compare Scripture to Scripture in wed truth that you and I can't manufacture growth. It is called the fruit of the Spirit. But my friends, we have to be, you and I are commanded to cooperate with the Lord as he will grow us in Christ. We are commanded. We got to have an active interest in seeking growth. So let's grow. <laughs> Do you have an active interest in seeking growth? I don't think you'd be out here on this morning unless your mom and dad made you come or you had an active interest in growth. Thank you for being here. Grow! It is a exciting command where we're told to initiate and cooperate with what the Holy Spirit would like to do in us. You know, um, I'd like to pause just on this, on this verb, grow. And I want us to understand something about the way God works, touches, convicts, meddles. 
Is it possible for God to meddle around in our life? You know, we might, that might not be the right word, but he, he is such a gentle Savior, giving us free wills, but putting his finger on our heart, you know, and helping us see how hollow life is when it's not surrendered to him. And he's often quietly preparing a rapid season of growth. If you met me when I was 18 years old, you would say, ooh, wow, the guy's heading for trouble. If you would have met me when I was 18 years old and nine months, and you didn't know anything before that, you would say, ooh, wow, God's got a hold of that guy. It wasn't nine months, but it was all the quiet work the Spirit of God had been doing for years. It became very visible in nine months. Let me relate that to nature. Did you know when it comes to growth, sometimes what's happening is under the dirt and we just can't see it until it really takes off. When it comes to growth, there is a bamboo native to China, and the seed gets planted, watered, and fertilized for that first year, nothing happens. The second year, it's watered and fertilized. They must make sure it has enough water, and they fertilize it. Nothing happens the second year. They do it a third year, not even an inch. There's this flat dirt, fourth year, and guess what? In the fifth year, in the fifth year, most often in the fifth year, there's a six-week period when that bamboo comes up, and in six weeks, it grows 90 feet tall. Did it grow 90 feet in six weeks, or did it grow 90 feet in five years? Well, the answer has to be obvious to us. It took five years, and so much attention was being paid to what was happening there at that spot. But it took five years, and then when the growth started, it became profoundly obvious. You know, I would say this about it. Let's grow in Christ, and don't be down where you may feel you are and discouraged, where you may feel you're at this morning, spiritual growth is often quietly in process and it's not yet obvious to even us. But when it begins, it can often be very dramatic. When it is seen, when it begins to be seen, it will often be very, very dramatic. So I would encourage us this morning, sometimes we're a little tired of ourselves. And we're going, when am I going to be done with this? Struggle, maybe. And I would say, stay humble. Keep looking to the Lord. He says we are commanded to cooperate with him and expect growth. It's coming. It's coming, church. You, are you awake this morning? It's coming. Let's grow in Christ. So there's a quiet, difficult season that isn't all that glamorous. But if we will keep seeking him and following that rapid growth, that beautiful fruit that we'd like to even see out of our, the Lord will place it and honor us with that. Well, there's um, the grammar here, the subject, the verb. Let's look at the prepositional phrases. There's two of them. It says, let's grow. It's, um, you know, um, what does the verse say? I've done lost it. You grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two prepositional phrases, grace and knowledge. That is how we grow. How do we grow? What are the catalysts for starting to see growth? There will be interaction with grace and interaction with knowledge. That's a prepositional phrase that determines how the verb is going to happen. We're going to grow by grace and knowledge. And what kind of growth? It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
it qualifies what kind of growth we're talking about in the Lord Jesus Christ. For the rest of the message, we're going to dwell on grace and knowledge. These catalysts for growth. Let's grow. And it's going to involve grace and knowledge. So um, we are given the mechanics of growth. Let's look at this context real quick before I go any further. Back up one verse to 2 Peter 3.17. And here's what God's word says. If you tell me, does this sound like a warning or does this, does this sound like um, something lighthearted? Listen to the verse. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you fall from your own steadfastness and be led away with the error of the wicked. Lighthearted, heavy hearted. Heavy. What's in context going on here? But grow in Christ. So here's the context of our theme this year. You don't get neutrality. There's no options there. The, ver the, the whole book of Peter's being ended, and you've got this beware. There is the potential for us to not fall away from salvation, but fall away from a steadfast, stable walk with the Lord and get led into error. He says, you're either going to grow in Christ or you're going to shrink. You really, you better beware. We're going to gain in 2024 on our journey to fellowship with the Lord or we're going to lose ground. We're either going to grow stronger in Christ or we're going to grow weaker. Would you please, would you please join me in declaring 2024 is a year Charles Bias must grow. Let's grow in Christ. And every one of us have that potential that 12 months from now, six months from now, we might be like that bamboo tree eight months from now that there is some radical evidence starting to show because God has been working for a while in our heart. And there's some beautiful fruit that we're going to start seeing. Let's declare 2024 spiritual growth, a passive attitude. This context, verse 17 says beware. Verse 18 says, but go ahead and grow. That's the safeguard a passive attitude towards spiritual growth is a regressive recipe. We can't, let's not be neutral. So we've had in the last couple weeks, a couple testimonies up here that say, I'm not going to have a passive attitude. I don't want to regress spiritually. So Mary Jane Cole shared, how many years has she taken to read through the Bible? Three. And it, Requires how many chapters a day? One. And we read a chapter and we write a verse, but we'll repeat a phrase from that verse. That's solid spiritual progress right there. Okay? And then we heard a, a testimony from Wesley this morning. One way to grow closer to God is get out of the comfort zone, step into a small group, and grow closer to God's people. And there's a certain accountability with that. That's great stuff. So the context is grow. Or shrink. Remember that children's song? Karen, you probably could help us. You want to stand up and sing it for us? All right, but it goes, read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. And then what happens? You will grow, grow, grow. The kids would love that. They'd get way up here. You'll grow, grow. And they'd stand it up. And then if neglect your Bible, forget to pray, you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Yep. I'm glad that song is still known. Would you like to come sing it with us? <laughs> All right. Um, but, but really, um, I read again this week that the word of God will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the word of God. And then I read another man named John Bunyan. You remember John Bunyan? He wrote Pilgrim's Progress. He said, prayer will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from prayer. And folks, I don't think with that, those two, we need, a, we need daily the word and prayer in our own sanctuary. So let's grow in Christ. Now I'm moving on because the rest of the message is probably the sweetest moment for us. Let's look at the phrasing or the wording of the first prepositional phrase. Grace and truth. These are the mechanics of what's going to generate growth. Grace and truth. How well do we understand grace? 
You know, grace is used many different ways in today's English. And it's used different ways in the Bible, honestly. It's a broad concept. We have the charm and grace of a ballet dancer. Graceful movements. Okay, we understand that's a, a use of the word such grace. We also know that the word grace is undeserved favor. Where a teacher grading a class, a college class, during a difficult exam and gives the class a curve because the class didn't do well. So she graded on a curve and we would say that's an example of being gracious at a moment in time. That's another way the word grace gets used. And then here's another example. Grace can be when really good qualities are displayed by an individual who is having really bad things happen to them. Well, they are such a gracious person because they have this beautiful display of character happening during such bad times. And we say they're such a gracious person. Well, I really think 1 Peter or 2 Peter 3.18 but grow in the grace and knowledge. In this context, when we're told to grow in grace, I think it's really talking about a wide display of godly attitudes that characterize our life when bad things are going on. Grow in that grace. And we are commanded to cooperate with the Spirit of God so that our normal nature doesn't bleed out. It's not what dominates the atmosphere. It is the grace of God that changes my normal reactions. Grow in that way. Now, when did Jesus show this kind of grace? When there were nasty, really tough things happening to him, and instead, godliness just flowed out of him. We are to grow in the grace of who? Jesus. It belongs to him. And I got to cooperate with him because I can't fake this stuff. I'm just too carnal. Anybody else out there just too carnal? We can't fake it. But we can go to Jesus and get in his presence and get grace that will blow our minds. It'll be like the bamboo tree. I didn't see that kind of growth coming in my life. God, add to me more grace. So here's a verse for us where Jesus showed just, just perfectly godliness during a very ungodly moment. Do you remember when this happened? Luke 23, 34. It's on the screen. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Do you remember when he said that? For they do not know what they do. Do we remember when this verse was stated by our Savior? You see, on Thursday night, Jesus was arrested from the Garden of Gethsemane and plucked out of the midst of his peers and arrested. On Friday, he was interrogated by the governor of the region. His name was Pilate. And Pilate said, I find no fault in him at all. And yet... The crowd cried for Jesus to be crucified. So even though he was arrested, he was tried, he was declared innocent, he was beaten anyway, he was spat upon anyway, he was sentenced to die. And sometime between being nailed to the cross, he's pinned down. The cross has now been stood up and the soldiers begin to gamble for the one valuable thing Jesus wore, which was a single piece of woven tunic that went over his body. Sometime between being nailed to the cross and the gambling for his tunic, Jesus said these words. That's not human. That is the Spirit of God coming through the Son of God, giving us the example of the grace of God. Listen, 
when you are at your worst and you are doing the worst things possible to the name of Jesus Christ, you know what? Jesus is right there and he is saying, Father, forgive them again. He is giving you more time to repent of your sins and get right with the Lord. He's not calling down fire from heaven. He's not hating you. He is continually showing grace. Father, forgive them. This is, this is true for all those that fear the Lord, that love the cross, and we are just complicated people, and we're messed up people. But he says, Father, forgive them. He shows us grace. Consider all the people at the cross that day when Jesus uttered these words. There was the mocking Jewish, uh, Jewish accusers. They were there. There was the brutal Roman soldiers. They just would rip anybody apart uh, if they were just given permission. There was the crowd that was calling for Jesus' crucifixion. Then there was a mixture of secret followers of Jesus. They, they couldn't be very vocal, and there was such a minority of them. Secret followers. And then there were some curious onlookers. What's going on? We, we, we know that's Jesus. We don't know much about him, but look what's going on. And Jesus' statement of forgiveness is utterly amazing. It reveals the depth of his love and grace. Don't forget it. Do you love Jesus this morning? Do you have a relationship with him this morning? Let's be humble and recognize we still calls him sorrow. And he is not against you. He is for you. And he still says, Father, forgive them. I'm going to want them to have time to get things right. This forgiveness that Jesus gave at the cross is such a great example. It keeps us alive so we'll hear the gospel in some cases. It keeps us alive. So we will repent of our sins and willingly surrender ourselves and to begin to live powerful lives for him. This is a motivating passage. Grow in that kind of grace. So church, how consistently are we able to say, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them because you've forgiven me. How consistently are we able to do that? Let's grow in that grace. Well, there's another word there. We're to grow in grace and we're to grow in knowledge. Knowledge. Hey, um, the word knowledge here is exactly what it sounds like. It's information. But information in the Bible is a dangerous thing. Because when you know something... We are required to what? He that knoweth to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So when the Bible says, let's grow in Christ, and we're going to grow in grace, but we're going to grow in knowledge, it's not talking about just accumulating facts. It's talking about having an understanding of facts and applying them to our life. Information and application. That's what's in view here. Let's grow in what we know about Christ. We're going to grow in grace, but let's grow in what we know about him. What we don't know and what you don't know or I don't know can hurt you. And what you don't know can hurt others. So, um, so when I was... Um, at Old Dominion University, working through my uh, business administration associate degree there. And um, I worked for a framing crew. And I had worked for framing two years before going to college. And so I was in my third, fourth, fifth year, somewhere in there. And I'm on a framing crew, and I'm on a job in Suffolk, Virginia. And there was a new employee that was brought on, and, and um, he was told what to do. I, I wasn't in charge of him. I was up on the roof. And this was a very steep roof. This was a story and a half. So, and it was um, either 10-12 or 12-12 pitch. It's pretty steep. And I just remember back in those days, believe it or not, I could carry, carry two bundles of shingles on, at one time. So I'm walking up that ladder and uh, you get on that steep pitch roof and you got those shingles and you hit that tow board and there's tow board after tow board. Well, on this particular roof, I think there were three. 
And I'm walking up, and um, I get to the top tow board, and I throw those bundles of shingles down, and the tow board gives away right under my foot. Now, the new guy had nailed the tow boards to the roof. And the new guy didn't realize the importance that you can't just slap a nail through half-inch sheeting, and it's going to hold a big man with a bunch of shingles on him. You got to hit the rafter. So he had just punched holes through there. The tow board gives way under my foot. Next thing I know, I'm on my butt. I'm sliding down and I'm actually thinking, no problem. There's a tow board down there. I'm in good shape. I'll catch that one. And I get a little momentum and my both heels hit that tow board and I just watch it go boom. And I go, oh boy, this isn't good. <laughs> right to the ground. What we don't know will hurt us and it can hurt other people. So the Bible says, grow in grace and knowledge. So we need to seek to know the Lord. And I want to take you to a passage of one thing. In the Bible, and, and, and again, as I come back throughout the year to this theme, we'll keep looking at pictures of God's grace, where Jesus said, Father, forget. We'll keep looking at things like that. And we're going to look at things God said to know. Expand your knowledge of Christ. And I want to take you to this final passage, Ephesians 3. And I think it'll be on the screen. And I want you to just catch the big idea. What did, what did the Spirit of God say to us we must know more about? We must know more about. I'll read it. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, depth, height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. And when you get there, when, when, when you know more about this particular subject that's in this verse, when you know more about it, verse 20 kicks in. Now to him, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we're even asking or thinking. To him be glory in it forever. So what is the subject in that verse that we must know more about? We got to get to know it better because it escapes our human rationale. It is what? The love of Christ. It is wider, taller, deeper. It's four-dimensional. It is mind-blowing. We are told to grow in the grace and knowledge. Can I ask you, when you had an encounter with the love of God that was so real, you felt it? He washed over you. And you knew even in your brokenness, even in your hurt or your pain, or even in your, um, even in the depth of the sin you were at, wherever it was, you, you knew God was comforting you. You knew his love was sustaining you. The circumstances didn't change, but his love was experienced. Friends, let's grow in seeking that encounter. Um, I don't want to take you through a, a long story, but there's dozens of times where I was so out of sorts and my spirit was so quenched and so off. But the love of God changed the atmosphere. That's going to help me grow. And I'll come run into his loving arms. You know, so let's grow in Christ. We grow in grace. And there's some things we're going to have to develop and realize it's not human logic. The love of Christ is beyond our comprehension. The text even says we'll struggle to comprehend it. So why don't we go to our prayer closets today and say, help me comprehend that. Help me know that love. Well, my friends, 
you've done real good listening. You didn't take too long. You did great. Why don't we stand together? And we're going to close with just a song, but a moment of reflection as we bow our heads. Why don't you right there ask God, Father, would you let the grace begin to flow more freely in my life? And would you help me grow in understanding of your love? I'm going to have Terry play a song. You pray, and then we'll sing. look up this way. If we could be of any encouragement or help to you individually after church, you'd know we'd love to see you, pray with you. My wife's right here. I'm right here. Let's sing with Terry as we're dismissed. My tears